It's good time. So I've ridden on a lot of boards in my life, a lot of Exile, a couple Victoria skin boards, and I've tried out Grape skin boards as well. And I've tried Zap once or twice. So I'm going to give you guys my honest opinions about each board I personally tried. I can't give a good opinion or review off a board I haven't tried yet. I hope you guys are going to get value through this uh, about what board to buy or what company to go with. I'm just going to give you guys my experience through writing these boards and that will give you a good understanding of what to buy for yourself. Starting out when I was skimboarding, I started off with a foamy. That shape is from Victoria Skimboards. I rode two Victoria Skimboards. If you are starting out, get a fiberglass skimboard. Do not get a woody <laughs> because they sink into the sand and they sink into the water and it's gonna make you face plant. Actually, no, get a woody because you just wanna start out and Get your bearings, you know, and it's just great practice because they're nothing like a real skimboard nowadays. It's pretty much buying the iPhone 1 instead of the iPhone 12. It's a complete different product. It performs way differently. Do not get a woody if you're trying to pursue skimboarding. Personally, if I was starting out skimboarding, I'd be like, okay, I know I'm going to be doing this for a little bit. I would get the EX1. It's a little into the hundreds. I think it's like around two, three hundred dollars to get an EX1. But the shape is just like the hybrid on Exiles. Like I said, starting out, uh, I rode a foamy. It was a great board to start learning on. I could go on top of the water. I could float on top of the water. I could ride waves. And overall, it was just like a good board for about two years until I got more skilled and went on to the more advanced shapes and materials. My second board was the Ultra. One of I, yeah, I think it was the Ultra. At the time, I couldn't really tell the difference between shapes or what it felt like on different waves. I was kind of just skimming to skim. After I rode the Ultra, I went to Exile Skimboards, and this might be helpful for people that are trying to get sponsored. When I try and pursue sponsorships or relationships with a company, you want to create a relationship with them. So you want to introduce yourself, you want to tell them who you are, whatnot. Um, I send in clips, I send in pictures to show them where I'm at in skimming. I usually pay for the product. I either ask for a discount and tell them I'll rock your boards. And then once you get the board, obviously make videos or some uh, take some pictures with it and send them over to the company. Then they produce some content for themselves in in return of their in investment. If you're not highly skilled yet, work up your skills and then pursue the relationship. Don't just you know not be that good and then pursue the relationship because they're not gonna get any use out of a poor skilled writer. You suck. Yeah, jackass. So you want to be good enough, you want to create a relationship with them, and then you want to give them content for uh, them hooking you up. Let's start off with the pro shapes on Exile Skimboards. I immediately noticed the difference of the rails. The rails on the Exile are way sharper. You can kind of dig your rail into the water more aggressively and into the wave. The pro shape has a narrow nose with a rounded tail, and the pro shape really shines in heavy shore break wraps, uh, heavy waves that have sidewash to it. So if you're connecting a cider to a big wave, it really holds well. And it also shines in tech tricks. So Lucas Fink, for example, he rides a pro shape and you see how he can flick the board super well. I think it's because the narrowness of the nose, so there's no drag in that little rotation of the nose. So the nose isn't catching any edges or anything. So it just goes Phew. Next is the hybrid. So if you're looking to buy a all around good board that you can handle most conditions out in the water. The hybrids is definitely a go-to. That's what you're looking for. It can ride waves well. It's good with airs. It's decent with technical tricks because it has a rounder nose and a rounder tail. Obviously you can do any technical trick on a skin board. I'm just saying the pro shape is very easy to do it. The hybrid is good for staying above the water, side planing, just all around. Like I don't like have any complaints about the hybrid. It is just 
a good all-around board. It's just very balanced. Going on to the Dew Cruise, the Dew Cruise shape is very good for floating on top of the water. If you're more of a casual skimmer and you're not that fast and you're riding weaker waves, this board might be better for you. If you're sinking a lot with a hybrid, the Dew Cruise will probably be just fine for you to keep you above the water and having just a more casual fun experience with skimboarding. Now moving on to my ultimate favorite is the Blaracuda shape. The Blaracuda has a round nose, it's not too wide and it's not too narrow. Comes down to a swallow or fish like uh, tail. This board really shines in side planing as well as surfing on waves. When you get more advanced in the sport of skimboarding and you're actually riding waves, you are gonna really like the you're really gonna like this board because once you get on the face of the wave the swallowtail acts like a fin on a surfboard so when you dig your board into the face of the wave it holds really well to me i love it when i'm connecting a cider to a wedge and then i'm going down the face of the wedge and then i'm bottom turning back into the wave because i have so much speed it really holds in that situation. That's where I've noticed it the most. And on other boards with a rounder tail, doing that bottom turn is way more slippery and it doesn't grip as much as the swallowtail does. So you might be the person with beaches that have smaller weak waves. So if you're a casual and you just wanna have a good time and you don't wanna like try so hard, I would recommend getting the Dew Cruise. If you want to progress your skills and you are looking more into the future of being pro, I would get the hybrid. And if you are in a little bit more punchy wave and you're just like a fan of Blair and you know you see other pros riding the Blair Cuda, the Blair Cuda is not a bad board to get on weaker waves. You just might have to run a little bit faster, but it'll be fun to surf those little uh, small waves on with the swallowtail. Let me touch on the Hornet shape. Me and Blair rode it one time in Mexico and it worked out really really well actually so um, what I've noticed is that it's really good for under the lip wraps throws a lot of spray out the back when you're doing a wrap why I like the Hornet is because it had a wider nose and then a very sharp tail so I'm heavy footed on my front foot so when I'm pumping or I'm leaning a lot on my front foot because that's how I naturally ride it gave me that flotation in the nose and then it gave me the maneuverability in the tail when I need to do it. When I needed to when I need to do <laughs> what did you do when I needed to do the turn. Other boards I've ridden are grapes and zaps. I've ridden two grapes and I've ridden two zaps. One of the zaps had a really narrow nose and it was oh kind of like a pro shape, but it was way more weird and bunky. It did not feel good at all. One of them was Yahir's. It acted more of like a hybrid with Exile. Quality of zaps are, I don't know what the quality of the board, but the way the board felt was similar to Exile's. Exile and zap rails are pretty sharp. Exile's being the sharpest for sure. And then Grape skin boards and Victoria skin boards, those rails are less sharp and more thick and bulky. That's just my personal opinion. That's how it feels. Obviously 5 8 thickness is 5 8 thickness. I'm just saying the way the rails feel are different. Grape skin boards, definitely quality boards. Uh, you can't, I don't see a problem going with a grape board. I don't have much detail with grape shapes, how each shape feels or the difference between them. But I know Paul, he's the owner there and he makes quality boards. But for an entry level skin boarder, it's kind of not the go-to because it's more of like an intermediate to pro leveled board because he because they are a bit more expensive. So if you are trying to enter the skin boarding world, I'd go with an EX1 by Exile Skin Boards. That's what I would do. The shape and feel of the board is very similar to a carbon board that Exile produces. So last but not least, my biggest recommendation is to get a Woody skin board. They're the best on the market. They're best quality. All the pros ride them. If you want to become a pro, get a Woody skin board. Woody's suck. Do not get a Woody skin board. Ever. All right, so if I was starting out skimboarding, I would get an EX1. Then I would ask my mommy for Christmas for a hybrid shape. 
And then from the hybrid shape, I'd get a Blaracuda. So it's basically three steps. Go with exile, go with exile, and then go with exile. You'll be shredding like Austin Key. Well, let's go into the dimensions of a skimboard. So what I personally get is five eighths thickness. Get five eighths. If you need more flow, I would just get a bigger board. The bulkiness of a three-fourths board with any company, it just does not feel good underneath your feet. I get competition weight. Get either comp weight or normal weight. If you need normal weight, that's fine, but comp weight gives you lighter of a board and the performance is increased. Get normal rocker. I get no textured uh, or no finish on my board because then you can just put your pads down and you don't have to worry about sanding. Traction that I like to use now, to be honest, is Let's Party. It feels like a carpet. It's very grippy and uh, I'm just freaking ripping on it. If you're not a fan of Let's Party or you don't choose to get Let's Party traction. How dare you? I would go with Freak Traction. Freak Traction lasts a long time on your board and they've been around for a while and the traction feels very nice. That's about it guys. I hope you enjoy learning about my process of trying boards out throughout my life. And I hope you guys got some value out of the shapes I've described. And hopefully you guys can pick out the right board just for you. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Please like the video and comment if you have any questions. Or I missed out on something that you need help with. I'll answer it right away. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.